Hello and welcome to this episode of Altitude where you get to hear career talks from executives, technical people, persons in science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. So sit tight, we have a great show ahead for you. And with us today, our first guest is Elizabeth Adams. How are you doing, Elizabeth? I am excellent, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you here. I know that we've been trying to get you on the show for quite a while. Yes. You have a very important job, and you know the three areas that we talk about are your career, your education, your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk a little bit about um, who you are today? What is your career? Sure, so currently, right now, I work at Thomson Reuters. I'm a technical integration manager. So I get to work at the intersection of cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Very really? fascinating. Yes. yes. Hot industries. Absolutely. Hot degrees, hot everything. Yes. Very good. Yes. So within your normal day, I mean, what role do you play or, you know, what is a typical day like for you? So if we t think about the two tracks, so from a cybersecurity perspective, I get to work in mostly technical engagement, technical mm -hmm. integration. So I work on a lot of mergers and acquisitions, kind of okay. understanding what our security posture is for oh. companies mm -hmm. that we purchase. Mm -hmm. And from an artificial intelligence perspective, I work with small working groups to help develop our AI principles for the company. Oh my goodness. It's fascinating. Oh, I bet. And I love it. Yeah, one of the things we're trying to do is, you know, getting students exposure to advancing and emerging technologies, yes. right? Putting them, in, putting it in the hands of the students. But the industry that you're in and the, the role that you play right now are very fascinating, and that is one of our endpoints. So yes. fascinating. Thank you. Um, let's roll over a little bit and talk about. Okay, you're doing this in, this fantastic work at this yeah. high end of technology, but did you when you were a little girl? if I, you don't mind me saying that, did you ever dream you're gonna be this fantastic technologist? Of course not, of course not. As okay. a matter of fact, when I was 12, I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to help people. Yeah. And so now I actually get to through technology. So part of the work that I do is mm -hmm. considered ethical tech design, which means building in ethics in the entire life cycle of technology from mm -hmm. the design phase all the way to the execution phase and then understanding what the impacts are on communities that we serve. So I get to look across the whole spectrum and kind of make sure that we're doing the right things. That's fantastic. So what type of education or what was, can you tell us a little bit, how would we get, or like our students in the yes. audience and you know, uh, persons that might be returning or want to get, it, get into cybersecurity, what would what type of education should they pursue or how would a high school student pursue where you're at today? Well, that's a good question because my journey was a little bit different. My undergrad from Bethel University right here in St. Paul, Minnesota right. is in business management. And so I started in technology really as a business person. So helping the business understand the technology. I then went on to get a number of certifications and then also went on to get a graduate certificate in leadership development. Mm -hmm. So I think there are many, many different routes that people can go. I would absolutely suggest that people consider a certification first, see if it's something that they want or that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. But you do, you've completed other degrees, right? So, I mean, you, you got certificates. Yep. Okay. And then you pursue other leadership certificates. Absolutely. And degrees, yeah. Right? And I have a diversity and inclusion certificate from Cornell. So it really just depends on where you want to go. Mm -hmm. For me, my curiosity was really in technology, but mm -hmm. I wanted to ma always make sure that we were doing the right thing so mm -hmm. that there was an understanding with the business as well as the technology. So I've always kind of kept myself in the middle. And, you know, that's a really good point because one of the things that we coach our students on is that there are different pathways. Like in my generation, you had to have the four-year degree, you know, it was almost like mm -hmm. a high school diploma. Yep. But today there are so many people pursuing certifications, you know, locally, um, remotely, online. And so I think it's important for them to know that you want to pursue your passion and then you, you must have the certifications really in the technical field to get ahead. I agree right. totally. So the business management degree got me in the door. Then I started working on other certifications, mm -hmm. a PMP. I have an Agile Scrum Master certification. Yeah. So, so PMP is project management. Thank you. Yeah, yeah project management mm -hmm. professional certification. And so all of these kind of helped me insert myself into the technology process. Very good. So here you are, you have this fantastic education pathway. You're working yeah. in a great career for a great company. So you have all these wonderful things in your life. What do. do you do for fun? 
Well, for one, I love to tell jokes. So I'm, I absolutely love to laugh. But aside okay. from that, I love to travel. So okay. I have been, in the past two years, I've been all over the world. I've been to Bali wow. and London and Paris and Santiago, Chile and Japan and Canada and Mexico. I have um, had a ball traveling okay. and learning different cultures. And all of that, honestly, it, um, it brings back to the work that I do because it helps me have an understanding for the different perspectives mm -hmm. and value the different perspectives mm -hmm. from all of the technical teams that I get to work with. And if I could just back up, you work with a lot of technical teams. One yeah. thing I didn't touch on with your career was, do you do any global team management? Have you done anything else? Cause, cause I the have. Well, yeah. I'll let you elaborate, but our students also need to hear from people about they have to have the interpersonal skills, the communication skills, to be able to work virtually on the phone, That's right. as well as through video conferences. So before we break, I don't yeah. want to leave this conversation without, can you share a little bit about your global team or virtual team? Yeah, so I have global colleagues, but I did work uh, for the Department of Defense a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I had teams all over the world. I had teams in Africa and teams in South America, wow. teams in Europe, and um, we worked to ensure that the military personnel had mm -hmm. all the information that they need from a technical mm -hmm. perspective. And so it was very challenging because you're working in different time zones um, and very, very important work. So mm -hmm. soft skills are absolutely important because if you're not directly working with someone, you still need to convince them that there's a shared vision, right? And convince mm -hmm. them that we need to work together for to get the job done. Absolutely, so. absolutely. <laughs> So this is just an incredible interview. We're looking forward to you coming out to maybe one of our schools or speaking at one of our events. But Love before it. we break, is there anything you want to share with our audience? I would. I would say, people ask me all the time what I would tell my younger self. Mm -hmm. And what I would <laughs> say to my younger self is really follow your curiosity. That's how I ended up in ethical tech design. That's mm -hmm. how I ended up in cybersecurity. That's how I ended up in AI. That's because beautiful. I just started following my curiosity and finding, what, finding out what was happening in those fields mm -hmm. and then figuring out a path to inclusion for myself. So follow your curiosity. Well, there you go. <laughs> So thank you very much for joining this episode of Altitude. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Absolutely. It's great. Great to have you here. Thank you. Welcome back. And with me is Paith Philemon. How are you doing, Paith? I'm doing well. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting to have you on the show today. Exactly. So as you know, our show is all about the youth, and you know, I think we met at a Link STEM event. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, you saw one of our students that were flying the drone, and you came, you beelined right over and checked her out, and so exactly. we really appreciate um, you representing and coming out to show us some love. And the one thing that I learned from there was like, you have this incredible technology input, right? So we're gonna talk all about your education, your career, and your lifestyle. So why don't we start with what you do today? Yeah. So what do you do for your career? Well, I am two years into my career track after graduating college, and I am a developer slash engineer for um, a very big United Health Group company in, the, in Minnesota and around the globe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I know many people that work for your organization. Um, so what do you, besides being a software developer, what type of languages or what area or, that you can share without divulging company secrets, of course? Definitely. What type of technology do you use in your job? I'm fortunate, fortunate enough to work with the latest emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, natural language processing, deep learning, machine learning. Um, and I'm particularly into the Python programming language mm -hmm. <laughs> that I could work with many packages and build um, products and wow. apps. Wow. And working in the healthcare industry, what you do is absolutely very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to make sure that either the reporting is happening or if it feeds back into some medical situation, I would imagine, right? Definitely. We do work with HPI, which is very sensitive for information of patients. So it, we are working to help improve the lives of our patients. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So when you were, well, when you were younger, like let's say middle school, did you envision that you'd be working as this big IT professional and engineering professional? I didn't. No one would have told me and I wouldn't have never guessed as well. I had other aspirations and dreams and okay. in the arts area. 
Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, no, we all have different pathways and careers to where we get. Mm -hmm. So when you started, well, what was the transition? So if you wanted to be in the arts, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but what, what made you swerve to go into the technology? Was it the money? Was it the <laughs> opportunities? Share a little bit about how you ended up and your education to get into where you're at today. Definitely. So I graduated with two majors, one in medical illustration, and then the other was business MIS. Um, I originally wanted to be a medical illustrator. Okay. That, was, that was in my heart. I thought it was set in my heart. But I knew I had to do more. I wanted to give back. And so I thought, where do I want to be in five to ten years? How can I improve other people's lives? Took a coding course and set sail from there. <laughs> Wait, this artistic <laughs> person went and took a coding course and never came back? Never came back. I actually took along my medical illustration and I said I will do both. Wow, that's fantastic. Because like medical illustration, I wonder if even people know that that is actually a track. It is actual track. Yeah. Um, you can go to medical school, you can go to um, graduate school as well. Wow. Becoming a design student. And the reason why I ask, we have a lot of students who want to go into healthcare, and I am sometimes short for answers. Yeah. But here's yet another perfect example of how you can actually use your, artis your artistic talents. So for those artistics, yep. Yep, you can do both. You can do both. You can hone all your talents, and you mm -hmm. can do both. So besides, I detect the artistic side being drawing. Do you have any other artistic areas? I mean, are you in other areas of art? Uh, such as like blogging and social media, those yeah. are the types of arts Because I, I see you practice. on social media all the time. So <laughs> yeah. tell us a little bit about that, how you take your art and then you actually use social media to your advantage. Definitely, I use social media to my advantage as a blogger and as a model. So I will freelance model and use my site to write about what I'm doing to the community and how I'm using my talents to give back. Fantastic. Do you think we could we can share that with the public? Yes. Your sure. links? Fantastic. Exactly. So we'll make sure we edit that in. Perfect. So now we've talked a little bit about education, a little bit about your career, and all those fascinating things. It's just amazing <laughs> that you've been able to to get to, you know, all these wonderful things packaged. Um, lifestyle. So what do you do for fun or what do you want to do that you're building towards with your career and all this money that you're making and all the artistic and branding? Tell us a little bit about what your future is and what you do to have fun. What I like to do to have fun is I'll travel, of course, mm -hmm. but what really helps me sleep at night is pushing STEM and mm -hmm. meeting as many folks as I can, mm -hmm. but also knowing that I came from nothing. so. If I can contribute and volunteer in areas such as Feed My Starving Children mm -hmm. or Coder Dojo, where I'll mm -hmm. give a few hours of my time in the weekend to mm -hmm. help kids learn to code and get them involved in it. So yeah. I guess going back to my career track, I, I push my, um, my career goals and I make sure that I'm impacting others. Yeah, well, I want to loop back a little bit to Coder Dojo and um, some of the other giving back that you do because that's something that's I think very important to you. Mm -hmm. How important is diversity in your field? You know, because is it about, I mean, for me, I've had examples where I'm like the only person of color mm -hmm. and I'm very, you know, I'm not even that call. I mean, I'm on the beige end of the spectrum. Have you found yourself in like a room and you're the only person of color, like hundreds of people? All the time. And so how important is diversity to you and your technology? Diversity and inclusion is super important mm -hmm. because I want to open up doors as well mm -hmm. because I didn't open up my door on my own. Somebody helped me get there. Mm -hmm. And so I want to see more folks such as like myself mm -hmm. in the board meetings that I'm in. But it also doesn't hinder me. It just means that I need to work harder to make sure that other people are getting the opportunity as I am. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of the foundation of what the Minnesota STEM Partnership is about, and we yes. actually have a program uh, that runs through the Twin Cities now called Power Up IT, mm -hmm. backed by Minnesota State. And that singular point is the in initiator for both of those efforts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Power Up IT, we're going to serve state of Minnesota, but uh, Minnesota STEM Partnership is focused in on that diversity objective. So I applaud you Thank for you your so uh, for your vision there. Now you also have another initiative, right? Mm -hmm. Can you share again the, the initiative that you were? Yeah, so I've, I'm the co-founder of a, a nonprofit started here in Minnesota mm -hmm. alongside my business partner. And we are a community um, of students, mentors, and leaders 
uh, focus on making sure that the youth are empowered and getting involved and getting AI and Python, all of that incorporated in their school curriculum. Absolutely. And I think, you know, uh, one of the campaign promises from the governor was that they were going to start to include STEM mm -hmm. as just a natural thing. Right. So I hope that, that your organization actually is, I know it's going to be wildly successful. Yes. And uh, do you want to just shout out the website real quick? Yeah, definitely. And the futuristacademy.org yes. is, again, a network that fosters um, emerging technologies to younger right. students. So we have a good partnership coming up down exactly. the road. Exactly. We, we have the same agenda. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing about it. You know, we're all pursuing uh, similar opportunities and options for our students. Mm -hmm. And I think that the future is very bright for them with people like you out there in the community making things happen. So before we go, is there any particular topic or anything you want to share with the audience? Uh, my only words would be to the youth in the audience. Um, and I would just want to impact them and say that the future leaders of tomorrow are created with today. That is my final thought to them. And I can't say anything more to that. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you today. so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome back. And with me is Bianca Rhodes. How are you doing today, Bianca? I am great, Dr. Wolf. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> it is because you have somehow avoided this interview the entire season. Yes, I did. So we better tell everybody why we're so excited to have you on the show today. Well, you are the producer for this show, Altitude. Yes. And you are also a creative. You are also very technical. So yes. you match all of the qualities that we have with STEAM. Yes. And it's just an honor and a pleasure to have you here as one of our guests. And so knowing that you have a real rich history and story to tell, we talk about obviously the lifestyles, we talk about education, we talk about careers. Yes. So how did you get to be this 
video producer, TV mogul? <laughs> well, um, honestly, it started when I was 14 years old. Okay. Um, it started with a show called Don't Believe the Hype with TPT Television. And um, I just fell in love with it. They had started up this, they did like a reboot of a, a TV show. Yeah. And my best friend um, invited me to come to the launch. And okay. I saw all the lights, I saw all the cameras, and I fell in love with it. And, and that was you. Yep. And I haven't looked back since. It's since fantastic. 14. <laughs> you don't even have to look in the rearview mirror. So no. since 14, <laughs> you took your creative side and didn't, and maybe you didn't even realize nope. that you had that side, right? No. Yeah, and many of our students don't realize what their future and their life could be, but you have to get in and try. You had to be right. there, right? Yes. You had to see it for yourself. You had to show up. <laughs> you had to show up to show out, absolutely. Yes. So we're very glad that you went down that road. And we actually thank you for being our producer for this show. Welcome. So. You never turn back. So along the way, with the way that technology has progressed so rapidly, oh, right? <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about what technologies or how you kept up with the pace of technology? Oh, man. Well, um, I guess in a way, just finding out different types of cameras and such. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to thank this place that we're in, so St. Mm -hmm. Paul Neighborhood Network. Um, has been keeping up with different technologies. So they've been around for over 30 years. So they've seen where it was the reel to reel and then it turned into the mini DV tapes and mm -hmm. then it was no longer tape. Mm -hmm. And so they have been keeping up with that. And um, along with my college education, they've also taught me so much. Oh, and yeah. so I was able to tinker around with other types of cameras and technology through this magical place. So, yeah, and shout out to SPNN. <laughs> yeah, SPNN.org. You know, a lot of people don't realize that organizations like Minnesota STEM Partnership, but for sure SPNN, they're nonprofits. Yes. They depend on donations and sponsorships. And so we're hoping that through our publicity, through the classrooms, all the way, you know, BDPA tagline is from the classroom to the boardroom. Mm -hmm. So hopefully somewhere along the way we'll realize how important this content is and, you know, maybe step up and, and provide some additional support. Yeah. But having said that, I've watched your journey from afar as well, and I know that you you were bedazzled by the 14-year-old's eyes in the studio. Yes. But tell us about some other work that you've done, maybe any special projects. I know you have a show locally that you created, and you also have done some award-winning films. Yes. Could you share a little bit about that with the audience? Yes. So, um, well, currently, uh, the show that I do monthly is called Candy Fresh. Yeah. Candy Fresh is hey. a show about music, arts, and culture. It has a DJ. It has dancers sometimes, uh, interviews, live studio audience, and a musical performance. And um, it is my baby. Uh, we are almost done with our fourth season. Wow. And um, it has been an amazing journey. Um, just honestly, it's, it's my give back type of uh, show mm -hmm. where I can uh, highlight those who have supported me and then also up and coming people, up and coming youth, up and coming artists, community leaders, business owners. It allows me to connect with all types of people and so I and truly love doing it. So. Well, it shows through the show, right? You can see the, the laughs, the smiles, the fun that everybody has. So it's an incredible show. And actually, we are very blessed to have you sprinkle a little bit of that a fun. tiny bit. Who wants to talk about <laughs> careers? Who wants to talk about school? We're in school. We don't need to hear more about, go. Well, I got to get a bachelor's. I got to get a certification. I got to do all these things. So, yeah. yeah. So you've taken um, your study through SPNN coaching and mentoring and, and staying current with the technology. Yes. Um, that manifests itself oftentimes in a public way and mm -hmm. winning awards yes. and different things like that. And I focus in on that to say, because it's very special to have you right here with me and be honored that you've won this great award. And I'm sure you have like a bunch of other ones, but tell us what I'm really trying not to say. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, I am a Emmy Award winning Yay. media professional mm -hmm. and um, it was through TPT television and so my mentor Daniel Bergen, shout out to Daniel Bergen, um, who's the senior producer for TPT, um, had brought me on to a wow. project called Discovered Truth. And Discovered Truth was about the relationship between African Americans and the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a documentary that we shot over, it was around 2015. And um, it was an amazing experience because Daniel Bergen has known me since I was a teenager. And mm -hmm. so to have been brought in as an adult mm -hmm. and as a professional to come in and assist him with producing and, and various parts of the film, I was just, I was honored and blessed to just even have him think of me. And um, yeah. it was amazing. amazing. And you never know when you, when you put in for an Emmy, you never really know. Um, and you'd have to go to the ceremony to see and stuff. And there's a backstory on <laughs> that whole day for What me. happens at the <laughs> Emmy stays at the Emmys, right? And, uh, <laughs> and so I made it, but I almost didn't make it there. Um, but it was amazing and to, to hold my, um, what do they call it? The, it's a certain type of angel, what they call mm -hmm. it an angel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just holding that and just knowing it and then seeing it with your name on it and all that stuff. So um, I keep it in my office. It reminds me, it keeps me humble. Um, it reminds me to keep moving forward when moments when I don't want to edit, when I don't want to do things. So it, it, it keeps me focused. Well, we so. appreciate it because I personally know how much time it takes to edit videos. I, you know, I had told you at one point in time I wanted to do music videos <laughs> yeah. for, you know, Jimmy Jam and all the, mm -hmm. back in the day, right? I knew three quarter inch <laughs> tape like crazy. I was the best editor in my class. But field production to me, we just didn't. I'm glad I found IT. Yes. So we have time for a little bit of one more project maybe. Do you want to share another current project? I grew up in the Rondo neighborhood, yes. right? So. That, so, that means a lot to me. Can you share yes. a little bit about that project? And then maybe if you can throw in like any technical or how, you know, what skills that you use to make that oh, happen. <laughs> um, so uh, the film, uh, don't, uh, well, I said don't believe the hype. Right. It's a whole <laughs> nother project. It's a whole nother project. Rondo Beyond the Pavement um, is a film, um, 2018, um, which was a project put on by St. Paul Neighborhood Network, mm -hmm. the St. Paul Almanac, in collaboration with the High School for Recording Arts. Yes. And so um, I was hired as a teaching artist to come in and teach video production skills to about 11 young filmmakers to create an intergenerational conversation about what happened to Rondo. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was, works. and it worked, and, and it, it worked. Works. And um, it was an amazing experience as an artist to um, give my skills. I come from a, a long line of teachers, so I enjoy that part. Mm -hmm. um, but to see them go out and, and use those technical skills. So they learn the basics of a camera, they learn the basics of lighting, audio, all of those things. And then honestly becoming professionals and going out into the community mm -hmm. um, and uh, having a beautiful meal with some of the elders in the neighborhood. And then um, having a interview, having a conversation. Okay. Um, they made about 23 questions. Um, that they wanted to know. Um, a lot of them did not know. They, they attend our Rondo. famed parade and, and Rondo days and never knew what it was about. Um, so they were very excited to learn and learn what life was like before the highway and mm -hmm. the culture the rich, and the, culture yes, culture. and the music and the people. And so um, it just became this beautiful organic thing. Like it is a film, mm -hmm. but it became this beautiful organic thing that happened between young people and their elders. And so it just melts my heart. <laughs> well, you have this deep connection with youth. So SPNN being a very important part of your education yeah. and your hands-on experience, if I was a high school senior or a kid in high school, could I like, come and learn how to do yes. videography and yes. camera work and stuff, really. Yes. How would I go about doing, do I just, like I'm pretty scared, <laughs> I have to catch the bus transfer twice. Oh, I'd but a. Tell me what I would have to do, just very briefly, like if I just had a passion for this, 
who would I reach out to? How would I do it? So um, definitely, if anything, you can start off with our website and okay. go to spnn.org. Um, and there is a youth tab. And so okay. there's different ways that you can plug in. We have a program called Create Tech. Mm -hmm. So that's if you have an idea, like if you wanted to do animation, if you wanted to learn how to work a camera and, and make something small, mm -hmm. you can come to Create Tech and, and just Maybe tinker that. around. They call it a teen tinkering center. Okay. <laughs> and so you can come and tinker around. But if you want to learn more, um, you can email us. Any of us can, can connect you. Sure. Um, but um, learn more about Fair. the youth department. And um, they have youth action committee. They have, you can create your own stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it's really just kind of connecting either through Create Tech or just stopping in. Um, a lot of us are right here to help you with anything and we will find the people that you need to talk to. I know that you have all the <laughs> modern software, the Adobe Illustrators on up the full yes. stack and not to just, you know, point out any one particular <laughs> vendor, but you have a lot of, you have access to a lot of high powered equipment. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take those video, TikTok, Snapchat videos yes, and really to the next level, to the next level beyond, yes, we this can is help a place you. to be yes, to do that. Definitely. So if that's any inspiration. So before we break, <laughs> Uh, are there any words of wisdom that you would like to leave for our youth or anything else yes. you would like to say? Um, for our young people, I definitely want to tell them, like, don't be afraid. Um, mm -hmm. Just get out there. And um, there's a lot of different programs that are available to you. Um, SPNN loves working with youth and loves helping them mm -hmm. um, with ever, whatever kind of projects they have on their mind. And so... Um, don't be afraid to try something different. Don't be afraid to pick up an actual camera, not just your cell phone, um, and try it out and, and yeah. see what you can do. So we're here to help you. Well, thank you so much. Uh -huh. I appreciate all the support that you give into the Minnesota STEM Partnership, our Power Up IT, all of our sponsors, all of the individuals that have you know, made this happen. Um, everyone, we are so appreciative of you, especially okay. Bianca. So thank you for making Altitude happen. And this is our end of our season. <laughs> so season one in the season can. Season one in the can. Season one in the Yay. can. Welcome back. Minnesota STEM Partnership is all about robotics. Every fall we support 11 teams in the 2019 season. And with me on location at Capitol Hill Magnet School at the uh, six of our teams will be competing there for the regional competition with the High Tech Kids Organization. And with me will be Janelle Rose, who is our Director of Robotics. Janelle has been very supportive, been an active participant, active volunteer in Minnesota STEM Partnership. She actually ran the robot, uh, Probot Kids team out of Progressive Baptist Church in East St. Paul, and she is also our director of robotics. So you're going to hear a quick interview of myself and Janelle on site at Capitol Hill. It has given them an opportunity to work as a team, um, to grow as a team. I think that especially with my team being unique, they've actually known each other probably since they were like in diapers. So I was their preschool teacher. And so you go from teaching them how to read and write and you know write their name and things and to see them work together in the STEM activity and be able to communicate effectively and, um, and respect one another in a team setting. So. To see them kind of grow from just kind of being like little toddlers to respecting each other and how they go about um, communicating um, and growing as a group. That's why I, I enjoy seeing the growth. I enjoy working with students who um, look like me. You don't get a lot of opportunities to work with kids that have opportunities to have free programming. Um, 
and to be able to see other role models and mentors who are invested in their future in STEM activities. So it's nice for kids to have someone to look up to because I know I didn't have that too much growing up as well. This is an opportunity to bring other people in who are in the field and show them where um, where these tools, where these skills can lead them and that there's actual careers like in, in the field that, that's feasible when they can see someone that looks like them actually doing that. So I think that's good that they can see other people who are actually, actually working in the field currently. Can you believe Minnesota STEM Partnership is only 18 months old? And by the time you watch this show, we'll be almost two years old. In those two years, we've had an opportunity to influence the lives of many youth in our community across the Twin Cities. We've been able to host drone clubs, host Lego robotics, we've had summer camps, we've had STEM camps, we've done individual workshops, and making big changes. Our annual event called the Youth STEAM Showcase happens on February 27th, the last Thursday of every month of February. And we want to invite you out to come out and see what Minnesota STEM Partnership is all about. You'll get a chance to see our drone zone, our robotics room, and we're also going to have targeted interviews for collegiates and high school seniors with a couple of major corporations from across the Twin Cities. Without you being our sponsors and our supporters and participants in these organizations uh, supporting Minnesota STEM and other nonprofits, especially SPNN.org, nonprofit. We look forward to having you come out, enjoy a great evening, and certainly have just a wonderful time with our organization. We'd love to have you there. You'll see a URL tagged to this video. So we hope to see you on February 27, 2020 at the Minnesota STEM Youth STEAM Showcase.